Hello everyone, how are we tonight? It's Friday night. Uh, the date is the 22nd of September 2023 and welcome to our Friday night crafting session. Hello, hello, hello. How has everyone's week been? Did you all have a good week? That's what I'd like to hear but I'm interested to hear whatever it was that was new and wonderful and exciting that happened to you this week. Oh, thank you Elizabeth. I see a couple of people have already been over to the video hop. It was only a short one, so there was time to watch that at 7 o'clock and then still get here in time at 7.30. So um, I made that card a week or I've had it in my, my mind for weeks <laughs> and they announced this month's theme uh, for the hop um, a couple of weeks ago and so I'd been mulling over in my mind what I was going to do and I realised that this card would be perfect. So I used the masks again, the same masks that I used last weekend. Um, you might remember we made a card with the sunflowers last weekend um, on a beautiful tartan background and this time it was a one layer card so I hope you I hope you liked it if you didn't watch it before this live then go back and watch it later so it's on the YouTube channel and it went live at it was scheduled for seven o'clock tonight yep you can watch the global hop later Donna completely fine hi there hello Lynn nice to see you what else have we got tonight for the dumb question? What is the video hop and how do you watch it? Well, do you go to my, did you watch me on Facebook, Lynn? I think you, no, you watch on YouTube. So even better. Okay. If you go, if you watch me on YouTube, you just go to my YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button because that's how I get people to see me. Um, and you can just go over there and it's the last video that went live before this one. So that was it. Um, It'll be, it has a global, um, like a map of the world as its um, front page as the thumbnail. And basically it's a group of us around the world. There's, I'm not sure how many because not everybody dips in every month, but there's probably a dozen or so of us um, from around the world. And we agree that we will try and get a video up each month on a particular theme. And the idea of the hop is that you hop from one video to the next. So when you look at the description under my video, it tells you where to go to watch the next one. And the one before mine told you to go and go and watch mine. So they're all in sequence. There's a list of all the hoppers, um, whoever's taking part that month. And we've got some really great, great names. Jay Soriano in the UK organises it. Some of you may know Barry and Jay. Um, and then I, who else is in there? Karen Hadler is in there. Um, just trying to remember, I've gone completely blank. Jackie Williams is in there. Um, gosh, let me go have a quick look and I'll give you some of the names. Esther Howard, um, she does beautiful work. There's there's some really, really clever, really clever girls um, in the hop. And I'm just going in to look at this, the description. Um, I won't go through everybody's names, but there's people all over the world. So just going, Aud Barbara, I hope I've, I'm saying her name correctly. Um, and Kayla McCauley. Um, there's a whole bunch of really, really clever people who like to do videos. Um, and we've all agreed that we'll help each other out and help out our audience by um, showing lots of different creations. Okay. And it's a great way to showcase particular themes or particular products. This month, one layer card. I can't remember what next month is. Last month was embossing fold. No. Yeah, last month was embossing folders um, and we there was some really great embossing folder ones. Oh, hang on. No, that was a different hop that I'm in. I'm not a video one. I'm just trying to think, what was the last month one? Goodness me. Let me have a quick look and I will tell you. Anyway, the hops are fun. I do them once a month. I try to do them once a month. There are occasionally if I'm away or something like that, I might not do them. But, um, but yeah, they're good fun. So, yeah, last month was a fun fold card. The month before was Emboss Resist. The month before was uh, my favourite new punch. So um, that's kind of, there's a different theme every month. I won't go back all through the years, but I did. I missed February and I missed May because I was away, but I've done every other month this year. So there you go. <sighs> so I hope that's a bit of fun for everybody. Um, let me just quickly go back and look at all your comments. And it's not a dumb question, Lynn. That's fine. I'm sure that you're not the only one who didn't know. <laughs> um, I'm glad you liked it, Rose. Thank you so much. Oh, good, Janine. Thank you. It, it is easy. I don't make it look easy. It's easy. <laughs> Believe me, I promise. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. <laughs> That's nice. I had a haircut on, what day was it? Monday. And I don't get my haircut very often, so... 
Um, it's nice every now and then to get a sip. Uh, hey, 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 Deborah. Uh, Marilyn, Solvega, Joanne, Katrina. We've got so many people. All right, it's great to have you all here. And I'm so sorry if I've missed your name. Um, but please believe me when I go say I read back through the comments. I look at all of them. Um, after the video, I don't, I don't miss anybody then. So I'm sorry if I miss your name right now, but I will go back and watch. You are subscribed. Yeah. Check it out after this. Exactly. There you go. Oh, Ellen was in one yesterday. There you go. So, um, yep. Different people are doing different ones. So it's a lot of fun. All right. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is craft along guys. So tomorrow is the day that I have picked this month to go live with um, a series of video. Oh, well, there's actually one main video, the live video that I'll be doing. It's completely free. You watch, you can craft along with me if you want to, or you can just watch and learn. And um, or you might want to play play the replay back and uh, and craft at that point. I did send out the supply packs for the video for those of you who ordered last month. You would have received a supply pack this month from me if you have not got your supply pack. I'm sorry, it should have been with you by now because I ordered, I sent them over a week ago. So uh, let's have a little look here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to be doing tomorrow the Stars at Night bundle. Some months I do a technique, some months I do a, a different kind of theme. This month I'm doing a suite. Well, actually, it's a bundle. I'm doing the Stars at Night bundle, and I'll switch over to the desk and I'll show you because I'm going to do a card with it tonight. One that I decided not to do for. Um, for the tutorials this time and uh, so this is a, this is a reject you guys are getting a reject <laughs> all right let's just switch over all right and this is the catalog that we're currently working with it is the mini catalog that went live on the 6th of September love 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 it so many good things in here this is the bundle called this is the suite okay called oh holy night and it's got uh, beautiful um, night divine stamp set and matching dies. I don't have these. Okay, so I have everything in this suite except this bundle. Okay, I don't have that. Um, and the reason I don't have it is because Denise and I, some of you know Denise is away at the moment, but Denise and I were talking a while before the catalogue came out and we were thinking about what our orders were going to be. And I really wanted to get this Stars at Night bundle with the stamps, the dies and the embossing folder. That's a bundle with all three. And I really wanted those and she really wanted this one. So we agreed that I would get this and she would get that. And at some point we're going to do a bit of a swap and um and try each other's. So <laughs> that works well for us. It's a little bit less money to spend and but a little bit more flexibility in that we have those things at our disposal, disposal if we need them. And I'm thinking I was so silly. What I should have done was I should have checked with her before she went away because she's away for a few weeks in Europe. And I should have checked before she went away and borrowed them while she was away. She's not going to need them, right? <laughs> so why didn't I do that? <laughs> Never mind. They're sitting at her house, I'm sure, unused. Oh, well. <laughs> but I will, I will be borrowing them from her when she doesn't need them. Um, anyway, everything in this suite is absolutely beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, it's a great way to go, Donna. Thanks, Cheryl. I think it is too. Um, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous suite. One step. Oh, no, nerve damage. Not very nice, Leslie. That's not nice. We don't like to hear that. I'm sorry you've had that happen this week. Oh, I Look, I had nerve damage in, um, I had a I had a blood test and they put the needle in and, and the guy that was doing it, um, I don't think he did a lot of um, blood tests and he put it into the nerve in my arm and I had pain from that for nearly a year. It's finally seems to have stopped. Occasionally it comes back just for a little bit, but oh my goodness, it's made me very nervous about blood tests. <laughs> Get them done by someone who does a lot of blood tests, someone who knows. But yeah, nerve damage is awful and there's nothing you can do about it and it's really, yeah, it's really yucky. So I'm sorry you're having that experience. Um, okay, so I want to show you this paper tonight because this paper is absolutely stunning. It's called Oh Holy Night 12 by 12 
designer series paper absolutely gorgeous and i have a card tomorrow in the alternative tutorials for those of you who are getting those um, i have a card in that group tomorrow that uses a whole bunch of these different papers and it's my favorite card in the whole lot it's just beautiful it's really really good so this stuff here is the sh um called shining brightly and it's foil paper this um specialty paper absolutely beautiful again and this ribbon who has seen this ribbon? This ribbon is to die for. It's just gorgeous. Look at it. I'm going to show you because it's so beautiful. It's the Knight of Navy gold glittered ribbon. How stunning is that? Can you get a good look at it? It is just beautiful. So I've been using a lot of this. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's get started. I just wanted to um, sh give you a bit of a, a bit of a look through. What is special is the embossing folder. It is a hybrid embossing folder and a hybrid embossing folder means that you work it works with your dies to cut and emboss at the same time now i'll be showing you in complete detail how that works tomorrow in the craft along video if you're wondering when it is it's two o'clock 2 p.m tomorrow the 23rd of september sydney time okay so if you're in another time zone um it's two o'clock sydney time zone and if you're not sure that you can go online and look at a time converter and it will actually do if you put your own time in it tells you what time that is oh you put 2 p.m sydney time and it tells you what that is in your time so that's really really handy i know isn't it beautiful dolores it's gorgeous get it out and use it i think i'm on my third roll it's just wonderful absolutely gorgeous we are missing some people. Well, I know Jodie's, Jodie's away, Donna. So um, Jodie's on a, um, she's been doing a cruise and a whole bunch of other things because she had a birthday last week. So um, we are missing her. Cherie, I have not seen yet. I did hear from her when I, I did a little live tip on my YouTube channel yesterday afternoon, a surprise live, and Cherie was around for that. So, um, yeah. <sighs> anyway. It's all good all right so we're going to play with a few of these and i'm going to start with a really simple card tonight and i'm starting with a piece of white this is half a sheet of a4 i'm making this my card base this is white thick thick cardstock um, which is my preferred card base either vanilla or basic white thick is my preferred card base it's a bit more stable than your regular white cardstock the white the regular basic white cardstock though is the best for stamping on this is the best for a base, I believe. Ah, you're the same as me, Leslie. You have the same ones. <laughs> ah, there you go. That's okay. That's all right, Joanne. You know what? Don't ever worry about spelling mistakes. As so long as we can work out what you mean, it doesn't matter what you spell like. Um, we all have problems with spelling sometimes. Spelling can elude everybody. So don't worry about that. <laughs> I knew what you meant. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this gorgeous paper and I want to show it to you. Now, I have already used some of the paper in some of my um, projects. So this is not a full pack, but it is stunning. And it kind of, you know, you've got the beautiful night sky mixed with like sandy desert kind of design. So it reminds me of, you know, the Sahara Desert or something like that. And I, it gets meant to be like Middle Eastern Bethlehem kind of stuff, but super, super beautiful. And you've got, it's like the background is painted. It's, you can see the brush marks. It's just lovely. So on one side, you have the beautiful scene. And on the other, we have this kind of, what well, kind of, once again, Middle Eastern mosaic kind of a pattern on the back there. Really, really pretty. All right, there's two of each sheet, six different designs, which means you get 12 sheets all together. Um, another little deserty kind of a thing going on here and you can see the brush strokes again just gorgeous and on that one we have this beautiful copper clay uh almost like a fan design if i put it that way it looks like a fan design doesn't it it's really really pretty and there's two of those and then we have this one which is pebbled path okay the pebble path is the brown color it's one of my favorite in colors this one i think it's gorgeous and you can probably see it's got like little flowers um in like a crisscross pattern really really pretty and on the back of that one we just have a beautiful starry sky on that gorgeous painted background isn't it beautiful 
Yes, you certainly could make a 3D nativity scene really easily. I, I feel a diorama card coming on for anyone who loves me doing those because they're one of my favourite things to do. So I think I will be doing something diorama, diorama-y at some point. Um, also, the, the other thing, if it's not these, the other thing that screams diorama to me is uh, the Forever Forest set. So maybe I'll do something with those too. So, all right, this this is really pretty. So you've got the boho blue on one side and the little stars. And on this side, you've got the gorgeous swirls of like a painted sky. Just gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? I've used up one of those already. And then this one goes from dark to light. Just really, really pretty. And on the other side, we have, if you look up close, there's actually like a little design in the background there. I like this one, but I like this side better. So um, there's not, I don't not like any of these, but I do have my favorites. And then this is the last one. This is the, this is like the copper clay with a little starry design in like a crisscross pattern. And on the back, you've got your, like your little Bethlehem scene. Actually, I've cut this one down. I've cut a bit off the bottom. You can see a bit more of the Bethlehem scene there on this side. And then you've got the beautiful night sky. So ah there see nice to do dioramas but i i always think of diorama cards because i kind of do a diorama card almost every single year and it's kind of my thing so <laughs> so people are used to me doing diorama cards in fact a couple of my most watched videos ever my second and third most watched video ever are diorama cards so it's um it's interesting isn't it you kind of find something that you love to do and you just keep on doing them <laughs> All right, so what's nice about all of our um, paper packs, they always come on the back with a list of colours that are in the paper. And that's really, really helpful when it comes to deciding on what inks to use, what cardstock to use with your project. So in this case, it's basic black, boho blue, copper clay, crumb cake, misty moonlight, night of navy, pebbled path, very vanilla. Now tomorrow I'm doing one of the cards I'm doing is uh, crumb cake. So I've got that right. It's got Misty Moonlight. It's got Copper Clay. It's got Night of Navy. It's got Pebble Path. Uh, and it's got Boho Blue. It's got all of them except the black and the vanilla. I've actually paired it with white. So look out for that one tomorrow. But those colours together look really, really rich and really lovely. So now I have the fun task of deciding which one I want to use for this particular card. And I'm leaning towards going with the blues. And I'm thinking I'm either going to do this one or this one. I've already used a lot of this one, so maybe I'll go with this one just because um, I think this is really pretty. But I'm going to save that one. I've only got one of those ones left, so I'll save that for something else and I'll go with this one instead. And let's bring in our trimmer and let's make a really simple card. All right, first off, I'm going to, doesn't matter which way I do this, does it? Okay, I'm going to make this, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do three centimetres, uh, three inches. I'm going back to inches for this only because um, the paper is 12 by 12. So sometimes when you're cutting paper, it's just easier to stick with inches because the paper is in inches. And then about five and one eighth or 13 centimetres this way and then I'm going to cut this three inch strip into three strips so one inch each one and some of you would have seen me do this card layout before very simple very easy and it turns out lovely every single time all right so that's those three there I've already got my white piece of paper and I'm going to be putting these onto my card just like this all right so I'm going to have them kind of and I don't know if you can tell but the pattern actually um, goes from one to the other so there's a little there's going to be a little gap in there but then they're actually the pattern is continuous so I've kept them in order all right and I'd like them to be close enough together that you kind of get a bit of a sense of that continuous pattern so what I'll do is I'm going to grab my Tombow and I'm going to start with the one here on the left. And I'm going to... Now, I always... I find this works well for me. I usually start by putting my first one down 
it's about oh, a bit over a centimetre from the edge. This one is going to be similar distance from the other edge and then this one will just go in the middle. That way it's easier to line them up. If you start on the ends and work your way in, that's always easier than trying to put them one, two and three because what happens if you put them in order like that, you run out of, <laughs> you run out of room at the other end or you end up with too much room. It's hard to judge the spacing. So this is a bit easier this way. Also, if you use Tombow, it's good because you can actually kind of slide it into place. So you have a bit of a little bit of wiggle room when you use Tombow. All right, so this one now is going to go in the middle so that the spacing is the same on both sides. Don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. That's okay. It would be a good theatre card. Excellent. Oh, that would be nice to add some LED lights. Indeed, oh, that would love. That would be lovely. Oh, I'm just looking, reading for comments. <laughs> All right. So now we get to actually decide what we want to put on it. And I'm thinking. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. Somebody tell me what I'm thinking. Although I could change that. We could put a square behind this. I think a square would be nice, not a circle. And we could choose vellum because vellum is what I nearly always choose. Or we could do a square. And I'm thinking maybe a square this time. I think maybe a square would be nice. About this size, about that. What do you think? Do we like the square? <laughs> So we could go vellum or we could go the silver. What do we think? Do we want silver or do we want vellum? Because I'm going to I'm going to put a silver. Um, well, if I use if I use the silver, I will do a blue star. If I do vellum, I would do probably a silver embossed star. A bit more work, but that would also be really beautiful. What do you guys think? What do you like? Donna, is that your guess? Are you saying silver? I've got people saying vellum and silver, but I don't know whether you're just guessing what I was going to do or whether. <laughs> All right. Um, well, how about I do both and then we can make up our minds. How about that? Should we do that? Let's have a look at both. So I could also do gold. Like I'm not going to use, if I use silver, I'm not going to use the, the sparkly ribbon because that's got gold in it. So I don't want to use silver and gold together. But I'm going to put this on here. Now, this is that very, I think everyone has probably seen this, but if you haven't, I'm going to blow your mind right now because this silver paper is not just any silver glimmer paper. This paper is the silver and gold adhesive backed paper, which means you can peel the back off and it's sticky. And we love that, right? So that could be a really great, a really great thing to do. Whoops. I'm going to put that down and I'm going to do I'm going to also do a vellum one so let's pull that through again put a piece of vellum on and we're going to run that through Well, there seems to be a lot of, there's both films and silvers, but there does seem to be a lot of um, silver in the comments. So I'm just going to pull this back. So if we did this, like I said, I would probably, well, you know, I could still do the navy star. It really wouldn't matter. And then if I do this one, the silver is pretty special, isn't it? What do you think? Cookie is quiet tonight. He's, he's actually sleeping. He's got his head tucked into his wing and he's asleep. So there you go. That's why he's quiet, Donna. <laughs> I just had a little look. Very cute. All sleepy. He is. All right. So what do we think? Do we like the silver? Shall we give it a try? All right. So here's the trick with the silver. Okay. You can use anything sharp. I'm just going to use my take your pick tool. And I just sort of pop that down behind. It can take a moment. And then that whole thing pulls off. And this is sticky. 
If it wasn't sticky, I might pop it up on dimensionals, but, you know, why would you bother when you've got this lovely sticky background? All right, so that's going to go like that. Looks nice, doesn't it? All right, I have got a piece of white, and I'm thinking I will just do this in... Um, so I have the stamp set for this as well. I have, well, right here we have the dies and I've got the embossing folder, but I'm going to use this stamp here. Actually, we'll go on there maybe. I don't know. Let's see if that is going to fit. And I think this one needs a bigger needs a bigger piece of white. So let me just pull that off. And I realised I'm not going to be able to put it on my block straight because it's too tall. It just goes over the edges of D block. I could use E block, but I think it's going to be, yeah, it's not going to fit on there either. Or I could, oh, I could fit it this way though. Ha ha ha. I'll do that. And I'm going to ink it up with my Misty Moonlight. You could use Night of Navy or Misty Moonlight for that. You like the silver? Yeah, I think the silver seems to be the popular choice tonight. I've got a vellum square now that I can use for something else, though. Hey. All right. And because this is a slightly larger stamp, I am going to put a mat underneath to create a better stamping surface. All right. So let's, let's pop that there. It's only just big enough, this piece. And that's the star. Looks good, doesn't it? And then, of course, I'm going to want to cut that out. Now, notice that this particular um, this particular die actually doesn't just cut the, the this one, which is what I'm going to use it for, but it actually cuts, cut, cuts these as well. I don't need that for this one. I'm just going to put it right here, and it doesn't matter. These guys will be off in, in, the, in the nowhere land, so that won't matter. But this is like one piece like this because this fits into the embossing folder for all three pieces okay has everyone seen how that works i will show you tomorrow properly in craft along but basically when you're doing this you line this up with the embossing folder it locks into place and then you pop pop this through and it cuts and embosses at the same time can you see that in there lovely lovely die absolutely beautiful and it matches this gorgeous gorgeous folder so just love that all right so Let's cut this. It is a nice star, isn't it? All right. Let's, let's move this around. I'm thinking I probably need to scroll out a little bit, but it's hard for you to see when it's, when it's so close, I know. So let's put this through like this. I'm going to line this up so it fits right there in my... And I've realized I've slightly gone off the edge, but I that's okay. I'm gonna I can live with that. Anyway, all good. I probably should have picked a slightly larger, I should have gone with the larger piece of cardstock. It's not the end of the world though. All right. So you can see like these bits just got cut off. We're not worried about those. All we care about is our center star. Okay, which is really nice. And while I've got this out, I think I will also cut my die cut for the for the greeting as well. So I'll do this at the same time. Because, our, because it's a photopolymer stamp set, you can get away with cutting first and then stamping. <laughs> but you can't do that with your cling stamps, with the rubber stamps, because then it's much harder to see where you're going with those. Um, yeah, it's just easier when you have the clear ones if you're stamping on a die cut. That was one of the problems that my Stamparatus sold for me. <laughs> and, of course, we don't have that option anymore. So I don't know if you can see, but can you see that those corners have slightly been cut off there? Now, something I could do to alleviate that, and um, because my piece of paper was a bit small, is I could round those off. And no one is ever going to know that there because the star itself is actually on so I'm just going to round off these pieces there you go no one will ever know 
because I just don't want those sharp edges. There we go. Looks good. Excellent. All fixed. All right, so now this little guy here, um, have I got that still on? Oh, it's back in the set. I thought it was still on the block, but it's not. I've actually put it where it's supposed to be. So this stamp says, wishing you the best and brightest holiday season. And I'm going to pop that on a block. And we're going to ink it up with the Misty Moonlight again. So this is a really easy card. Super easy. Oop, helps if I turn it up the right way. Goodness me. I'm going to stand up so I can get directly under it and make sure that it's, or over it, and make sure that it's um, lined up on my die cut properly. Here we go. Haha. <laughs> We, we sorted it out, right? All right, so now I'm ready for this to go onto here. And this is going to go down the bottom here, okay? You can sort of see very simple. It's coming together really nicely, though. Um, as for bling, well, I'm not going to be using the trinkets from this suite because they're gold, and I'm going with a the silver theme here. So I've got a couple of choices. I could actually cut out a couple of these little guys out of the silver paper and use them around or I could use some embellishments from my um, embellishment box I haven't decided oh and the other thing I could do if I wanted to I could leave this as is or I could even put I could put another star in the middle if you like with the silver again but I feel like it doesn't need it I think it's fine the way it is so let's just pop this on with some dimensionals one two And shouldn't I use starry skies for this card? Um, do you mean this paper? What do you mean? What did you mean, Marilyn? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the starry sky, the colour. I know what you mean. Yes, well, that would work as well. But I've gone with the starry sky isn't actually in the paper. So I have just gone with colours that are in the paper. That's the reason why. So Starry Sky is a beautiful colour, but it's a little bit got a little bit of a purpley tone. Can you see it's a little bit more purple than this paper? And so that's the reason I haven't used it. So, all right. So this piece here is going to go down towards the bottom. So we want to put some dimensionals behind this as well. Hi there, Rose. Nice to see you. If the stamp mat has grid lines on it, stamping and lining up would be so much easier. Do you know it's not actually meant to be a stamp mat, even though that's what we use it for. It's meant to be a paper piercing mat. So it's meant to be used for, you know, when you're using a piercing tool to poke holes in a project or using one of our, um, we used to have some templates for piercing. And um, it's not really designed for stamping, but I like to use it for stamping. So um, even though even though that's not its original purpose. All right, so it's coming together now. Now the question is, do we want some bling? And do we want, I have a leftover ribbon from an earlier project today. We could also add a little bit of silver ribbon on here if we wanted to. That might look nice, but it's not necessary. I don't know that it needs a lot. Do you think we should add some rhinestones? We could do, let's, let's see what bling would look good. We have got some misty moonlight um, bling, but I feel like those will get lost. We have, these will not got, get lost. We've got our iridescent rhinestones. So those are definitely in with the choice. Also some little silver um, pearls on the festive pearls. Those would look nice. Those are probably going to be my two top picks, I think. Um, oh, here's another option. We have, oh, I know, I know what another option is. I have another good idea. We also have the glitter sequins. And if I can just find them, because I used them earlier today, those would also be a good choice if I can locate them. Give me a second. I'm going through my, this is the problem. I have too many embellishments. This is what they look like. See that? 
That's why I have trouble. Oh, I found them. Here they are. They're not in the box. There's the problem. Right. So I could use these little white glittery ones. Those would be really nice as well. So they're the three choices I'm giving you. Okay. No ribbon. Okay. Chris, I, I think I agree with you. Oh, you're just joking, Marilyn. <laughs> it would have been a good idea if I was using that color though, because starry sky sounds right, doesn't it? One rhinestone in the center of the stuff. That could work. Yep. That would be nice. Odd numbers always look better than, than um, even numbers. So one, three, five are always going to look better. My usual preference is three on a card. But yes, this card certainly, because it's symmetrical, you could do one in the center. No bow and clear sparkle gems. Okay, so do we want the iridescent rhinestones? They're kind of clear sparkle gems. <laughs> uh, clear rhinestones would be good. You know, I think I'm out of clear rhinestones. I never let that happen. That's that's very naughty of me. I should not let that happen. So also in our neutral sequins, we have some silver sequins in those. Those, though, they're more of a matte silver, not a glittery silver. Silver pearls or white sparkle. Well, the white sparkle is here. There you go. The white sparkle would look good because it's really sparkly. And I think the... What I'm worried about is that the silver pearls here, even though they look really pretty, they I think they might get lost, these ones. So I think something really blingy is going to have to be the go to compete with this silver. So let's try these. I don't know. What do we think? Are they glittery enough? They might be. They might be glittery enough. And then maybe a little one up the top here and then maybe another little guy right at the very top up here and I think you're right Chris I think no ribbon white sparkle yep that's that's I think it works so there you go that's card number one we've done a card tonight guys Woohoo! what do you think happy with that Now I did have, I'm wondering whether to, 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 I might, I think I might have to be brave, okay, and take a risk tonight because I've got another card in my head, but it's only living in my head. I haven't tried it and I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> that sounds dangerous, doesn't it? But I do have some black cardstock handy and I'm thinking maybe I will give it a go and we can see if it doesn't work, we're all going to learn something. How about that? Is that that's a bit brave isn't it you'd think i just pick things that um i know are going to work but you know where's the fun in that so i had this idea looking at this stamp set i had this idea that this here and this here these ones and maybe a little of these as well but these two in particular look a little bit like fireworks and I'm thinking, hmm, how could I make a fireworks card? You know, it'd be good because you could use it for like, um, you know, um, like New Year's, New Year's card or something like that. Happy New Year. Should I give that a try? So it's either going to be, it's either going to work really, really well or it's going to be a complete disaster. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's see. All right. So. For this though, I'm going to have to do a little bit of embossing and ideally I would run my embossing buddy over this. Now I had my embossing buddy out earlier today and do you think I know where it is now? Mm, already this idea is going downhill already. Ah, whatever. We're just, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this. Okay, so this is a new Versamark pad for me and I'm going to pop this one. it out hasn't been used before and I'm also going to try it on um, let's see if it fits on here it does fit on D but only just but it does and I'm going to put a, this little guy this firework one here live dangerously yeah we'll see what happens right <laughs> I hope you guys will forgive me if it doesn't work out C. Now this is B. What I really want is C. Where is my C block? Yeah, doesn't matter. I'll use another D. It won't matter. 
All right, so let me try. I'm going to try a couple of the big ones. This is my new Versamark pad. So while it's so pretty and uh, not dirty, because Versamark pads get really yucky over time, um, while it's looking good, I want to use it. And, yes, I should be using a mat underneath again, but I always forget. It's all right. won't matter. And let's try. I can see where that went. So I'm going to have another one up here. Can you, you can't even probably see them yet. You can see them a little bit in the light. Can you see that? All right, and then let's try the other one. So, like I said, this is just an idea I have in my head. So I really don't know if it's going to work or not. And then maybe a third one. So I've got one, two, and three. Oh, I have another one over here. All right. Okay. Let's try that and see. I'm going to bring in my, I'm going to have to do a couple of things. First of all, I need to bring in my embossing additions kit. And I think I'm going to need some white embossing powder. And I know already some of you are thinking, what the heck is she doing? But some of you might be thinking, I know where she's going with this. Maybe. <laughs> so this is just white embossing powder. I'm pouring it over the whole thing. I'm probably going to trim this piece a little bit shorter, but I'm going to emboss the whole thing first and then see if I decide to do that. All right. All right. So so far, kind of like, kind of looks like fireworks, right? A little bit. Of course, we'll need to add some color, but we can do that. All right. Now I've got some little bits, not much, but a little bit of embossing powder where I don't want it. And I have discovered this is a tip for you. Use the putty end of your take your pick tool. It is fantastic for getting little bits of stray powder off and this is something I kind of I don't even know where I got that idea I think I don't think I, I don't know I don't know if I saw somebody do it or what but if I did maybe I got the maybe I stole the idea from somewhere but I just think it's a great idea because I don't use the putty end of my take your pick tool all that often and so it's a good use for it all right so I'm going to set that to one side for a second and I'm going to get this back into I love this emboss embossing additions kit because it really stops you from making a big mess. All right, let's pop this here and we're going to just tap it back. You can use a brush as well if you want to. Tap it back into the tub and no mess. And away we go. Put the lid back on here. Hello, Margaret. Nice to see you tonight. <laughs> hey, Joan. Oh, Linda moment. Yeah, I've had a lot of those all day long. I don't know. I've been losing stuff all day. Seriously. Whoops. All right. Okay, so now it's time to bring in the heat tool. So I'm going to need to turn on the lamp. And if you why do I have to turn on the lamp for the heat tool? That's because the lamp and the heat tool are on the same PowerPoint. So if I turn on my heat tool, I get the lamp as well. All right. So I'm going to turn on my heat tool. When you turn it on, it just takes a moment or so. I give it a few seconds to warm up. This is a really great heat tool. It's a good one if you're looking for, this is the Stampin' Up! one. I believe it's $54 if I've said that right. Um, but it's it's a good heat tool. And I use mine a lot. If you're going to do a lot of embossing, you're going to need a heat tool. Once upon a time, we used to put them on the toaster <laughs> to try and use the heat from the toaster to, to warm up the embossing powder. And it used to work, but it was very messy and prone to accidents. All right, so this is going to take a little moment for this. Well, I just realized, too, I've got a little bit of powder here that I missed. That's fine. Right, so I'm going to cook all this powder and it just goes a little bit whiter 
and hard and shiny and it is working but it's hard to see one thing not to do and i know this from watching a, a customer a friend of mine who did this was she put it down on the floor thinking it would be better but she put it on the carpet and burned the carpet and we had a a rectangular burn mark in the carpet which wasn't so great she felt very bad about it don't do that nearly there All right, I think we're done. I think we're cooked. Yep, the tweezers are right here, and yes, I should use them. <laughs> you remember using the toaster, Margaret? Yep, you're not the only one. Lots of people did that. Now I'm just going to hold it in the light and make sure that I have cooked it right. And the next thing, if it looks right, the next thing to do is to run your fingers over it gently and make sure that none of the powder is still powdery. Nope, it's good. We have it. We have it done. Okay, looks great. Now, it looks like a good idea. I like the fireworks, but it's going to look more like fireworks when we add some colour, right? You like the smaller firework? Yes, it looks more like real fireworks, doesn't it? I like it too. So what I need to do is I need to find um, a nice bright colour. So maybe daffodil. I'm thinking yellow, orange and bright pink would be good. And I'm just looking to see what I have. Oh, now that's a retired colour of magenta madness. I don't want to use that if I can help it. And what other colours do I have? I have a couple of retired pinks. See, there's like polished pink. Well, polished pink is retired as well. Uh-oh. But bright orange. Do I have any pumpkin pie? That's a good question. I have calypso coral, but that's a bit light. Um, let me see. I'm just going through my blends to see what colours I have. There's a, there's a, those ones might work. What do we think? Would those colours work? Yeah, melon member would be perfect, but I don't have it. I don't have that colour. I have moody mauve, but that's not bright enough. It's nice, isn't it? Moody mauve is such a nice colour, but it's not bright enough. And Rococo Rose, that one's gone too. Goodness me. I have a lot of retired ones. I really need to update my blends. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. I've got Cherry Cobbler, but I don't really want red. I, would, I think brighter, lighter, brighter colours are going to work better. I don't have Sweet Sorbet either. I, I'm really lacking in the... In the um... Oh, thanks, Megan. Megan put up the number for the heat tool. Thank you so much, honey. That's awesome. Okay. Um... I really need to go in. Do you think red would work? <laughs> starry sky. We see everybody wants to. I do have starry sky, so we could do that. Um, let me see. Where is it? That's starry sky. And I've also got um, orchid oasis as well. But I don't know if that will work or not. Let's start with let's start with the pink. And I'm going to I'm going to start by colouring in. I'm wondering whether to start with the darkest colours at the outside and then, no, I think I'll start with the darker colours on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to colour the white because blends work on anything. They work on porous surfaces as well as, um, as, well as your um, non, you know, they work on everything, porous and non-porous surfaces. So you can use them on cardstock, but you can also use them on plastic and on glass and on, all sorts of things. I mean, they're fantastic, really. Great tools. And so you can add colour to your different your different um, things like this uh, against a black background, which is diff difficult to do any other way, right? So colouring on black can be challenging, but I'm just going to 
add some pumpkin pie to this one. And I'm thinking I might work my way out and add some yellow towards the ends, like darker. The daffodil, I think, might look might look nice. So this is a little bit time consuming during this, but kind of fun too. You could also leave some white if you wanted to, but can you see how this is looking? It's kind of kind of cool with the color added. Let's try the let's try the daffodil. And I'm using the skinny end because you don't want to. That's it's only such a small area that we're coloring. But I'm being a little bit less careful now <laughs> because I realize you're not going to see it on the black anyway. So. I'm just going to colour. Um, I have got quite a lot of retired ones. I've got to go through and pull out all the retired ones that I'm not using. So I've got about five dark and light mango melodies. I used a lot of those ones. And trying to trying to um, update my colours. I got Pebble Path the other day. I think I ordered the Pebble Path. I don't remember if it's arrived yet or not. I'm just going to try another yellow. I've got Lemon Lolly. That just arrived the other day. Here's, this is Dark Lemon Lolly. Let's see if that works better. Actually, it's just as good. It's newer, so there's a, it's a bit inkier. Okay, so that's kind of how that looks against that dark background. Parakeet. Oh, that's a good colour. Do I have it? I think I do. I have all the new, the last year's in colours. Yes, I have Parakeet. What a great idea. Thank you. That's an awesome idea. So I will use the dark one, I think, and I'm going to go. I've also got Orchid Oasis. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do the outside ones. And then this is the dark Parakeet. And then the other one, of course, is the lighter one. But Against the dark and such a small area, it wouldn't make a lot of difference which one you use. This is a fun technique. I did a I did a card with this uh, last year. It might have been actually. I think it was for one of the video hops. I think it was a video hop, and I uh, either video hop or one of the one of the ones that I'm in. And my card had flowers that I embossed in white on a black background and then coloured with the blends. And it's a fun technique. I don't know if it actually has a name, but it is a fun technique. Tahitian Tide. Yep, got that one. Yes, I do have that one. So this is, is this Starry Sky? Yes, this is the dark Starry Sky. I think maybe it's too dark against the black. I can kind of see it though. Maybe the light would be better or the Orchid Oasis would be better. So, so there you go. This is what my idea has kind of worked. I'm kind of liking it. So this is where it's really good to have a good selection of colors to choose from. And you can see I need, I've made me realize I need to update my colors. My pumpkin pie is, it's working, but it doesn't seem to give me as much. No, it's okay. Certainly a fun card. Be a nice card to give to someone as a as a New Year's a New Year's treat, New Year's surprise. Let's do the yellow at the end of this one. Granny apple green would be good. I do have that, but that's I know. I think I don't want to add too many more colors at this point. And I think the the um, parakeet is probably that's Jody's favorite color parakeet, isn't it? Or lemon lime twist, one of those. She loves the bright lime greens. And just because I can't help myself, I'm going to add a bit of Tahitian Tide here in the middle. Right, 
let's go Tahitian, uh, sorry, was it a parakeet again? And I might throw some of the pink in the centre of this one. Because fireworks can be any colour, right? There's no, one, no particular colour that fireworks need to be. So you could really let your imagination run wild on these. I'm nearly done with all these colours. So I'm going to keep it light at the outside and I might put some darker colour over the inside. So maybe maybe the light, the light starry sky. Does anyone ever, I'd love to know, does anyone ever give New Year's Eve cards or New Year's Day cards? Would you use a card that had a New Year's Eve theme? Or is that not something that people really use? Has anyone ever sent a New Year's Eve card? You did a fireworks card that celebrate. There you go, for a 25th mail card. That's a great idea, actually. I hadn't thought of that. Ah, yes, I have done bleaching. I did it as a whole series a few years back. In fact, I'm sure I've done a live for bleaching. I'm sure I have. I've got a couple of cards over there that have got bleached bleach centres. I added the blue to the middle of this, but it didn't show up very well, so I'm adding green instead. And I think that looks it's a bit more noticeable. All right. Kind of looking cute, right? So I feel like... I think now the colour that we need to have for our base is going to have to be bright as well. So I'm thinking maybe, hmm, do I have any of the lemon lime twist? I might. Or the um, parakeet. Let's see if I have any of that. Yep, I've got some parakeet. So that could be fun. See, Jodie's missing out tonight because I told you she loves this colour. So she'll just have to watch the replay later. That's okay. So I'm going to make this cardstock card size. And let's use our bone folder if I can find it. Here it is. And now this is going to go on here, but I don't want it to take up the whole card. So I'm actually going to chop off a little bit at the bottom. Actually, I'll make this, we'll make it nine. So I'm taking a centimetre off here. And I'm deciding whether I would like this to be the same width with the piece here. And then I'm going to put maybe a sentiment here or... Oh, we have a celebrate in the um, wanted to say dies that might work really well on this card because a celebrate would be good, right? All right, so do we like that? You finished a card with a Rubik Cube die cut. What a great idea. Does he do the, does he, is he a cuber? That's what they call them, right? They call them cubing. It's a cubing is where they go to those big tournaments with Rubik's Cubes and they're amazing. Hi, Kay, nice to see you. You wouldn't use or send one. Fair enough, Megan. But I think the girls are right that you could celebrate an engagement or um, a big celebration for a you know a big milestone wedding anniversary or something like that. Don't you don't cut the sides? Okay. All right. So leave it like that so it's a little bit up from the bottom. Okay. Got it. So I'm going to glue that down. So even though. This card's a little bit different to kind of how it was in my head. The idea has kind of worked. And I don't know whether that's what those stamps were meant to be, but I like them like that. I think it's a cool idea to use them for fireworks. All right, so like this. And then I've got... 
I was thinking of using, if you were going to do um, Happy New Year, there is a, if anyone wanted a Happy New Year's card, you could use the Happy New Year from here, from the brightest glow. We've got a Happy New Year there. But I was just saying, we also have a set of dies called Wanted to Say. So let me just find them. I only used them a week or two ago, so I know they're not far away. I'm just going to go into, oh, here they are, only third down. Look at that told you it wasn't long since I used them and there are there is a really nice celebrate in here so it's this one and then there's a a piece that goes with it so I'm thinking if I was to put my celebrate you know across the bottom here or you know even over here maybe maybe on this side because there's less interruption there that might look really good so the question is should I do it in sparkle paper I don't think so I think that that's not going to be right so maybe if I was to do this in white and I put it on a hmm maybe the color of the night Marilyn is starry sky we could do a, a starry sky background perhaps so let me bring in my cut and emboss machine. I'm going to do my actual thin celebrate wood in the white first. I really didn't know. Whoops, I just dropped it all. Um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do exactly tonight. I knew I wanted to play around with this set. And I've had a few ideas in my head over the last, because I have it as my craft along theme tomorrow, I've been milling over a whole bunch of different ideas. <laughs> so that's what happens when you've got to come up with ideas. You just have your brain goes over and over and over all these different ideas. So these are some of my reject ideas. <laughs> you guys are getting the rejects. Sorry about that. So I'm going to do white celebrate. Because it looks really nice. Look at that. See how nice that is? It's really, really, really easy and crisp. I could just do it like that on the card. But I think it would, might look good on the piece that is meant to go behind. So the question is, what colour should that be? Should it be sparkle? Should it be... Hmm, that is a good question. Let's quick pop this piece out. Look, the other thing, if I was really smart, <laughs> um, it would have been great to do my Celebrate on, um, add some adhesive uh, sheets to the back of it so it would be easier to stick but that's okay we can still make it work starry sky do you think so the pink foil do you know i don't have the pink foil i really should get it <laughs> there probably is rose i don't have it though i don't have the other set um it can be hard to find ideas for teenagers i did the, I tell you what is a really nice one if he's into music. Um, my son is into music, so you know I got this for him, and you know, the the electric guitar and you rock my world. That's really great for for teenagers. Um, but we had a set um, ooh, a few years ago that had Converse shoes in it. Does anyone remember that? That was a really fun set. So I'm thinking probably Starry Sky for this. But I'm just deciding. And start oh, all Orchid, Orchid Oasis would work as well, but we I haven't actually used any in the card, so I don't want to incorporate another colour. This is Starry Sky. Can you see what I mean about it being quite purple? Um, it is definitely leaning towards the purple, which um, most of our other blues don't. Orchid Oasis and this one both lean towards the purple. So what I'm going to do here is I am actually going to cut this larger piece and I'm going to do it really fast away from my desk so that 
you haven't got to worry about me um, bringing in the cut and emboss machine again because I seem to be carting that around a lot today. I should be using my mini. That's what I should be doing. But I had put my mini up on the shelf and hadn't bothered to get it back down again. Okay, so this is the piece here that this piece then goes on. And the nice thing, if you use the two, like I'll go for high contrast, the dark one and the light one, it makes them stand out really, really beautifully. So that's that was kind of the purpose. Plus, then you can use dimensionals or something like that behind it to pop it up, but you can't with a really thin one like this. So it has a couple of advantages. So the main trick now for me will be to get a little bit of Tombow on this without going crazy. So I find it can be tricky, but... Also, I should be using my silicon mat. That's the other thing I should be doing. Goodness me, I'm not doing anything right tonight. <laughs> oh, well, we're having fun. That's that's the important part. That's more important than getting everything perfect. All right, so I'm just trying to use a little bit here and there. It doesn't have to go everywhere, but it does need to go on the high, the pointy bits, any bits that stick out so that they don't end up flapping around. All right, so let's see how we go with this. So I'm going to just kind of position it so it all sits right. And ta-da, that's how it looks now. So we can put this and put it in the middle. I think, though, it's going to look better on this side, just the way it is. And I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals behind it to make it sit up. This is a really different kind of card, isn't it? It's not something I would normally do, but it is certainly, it's nice. I don't mind it. Now, I was thinking, what should we have in the way of bling? And I'm thinking probably iridescent rhinestones are going to work really well with this, probably, unless anyone has any specific ideas about that. If you were going to add ribbon, you could use the black and white gingham ribbon and then colour the gingham, the white part of the gingham, with the with the parakeet to tie that in to, to this. That could work as well. But I'm just for fun, because this is a quick card, well, it's not really a quick card with all the embossing, is it? But because we need to make it a quick card, <laughs> I'm just going to pop it here so that that sits up like that. What's the name of the dies? These ones, they're called Wanted to Say. And they are standalone dies. It means they don't match a stamp set or anything like that. Let me just show them to you because I think they're one of those dies that get overlooked a little bit in the catalogue. But the Celebrate, I think, is the most useful word in there and they're here on page down the bottom here page 167 so you've got a few different you've got a happy birthday you've got a feel better soon you've got a celebrate and a you're too kind and each of those also has the larger piece that goes behind the thin the thin writing of the word and then the piece that goes behind in this case the thin writing I did in the white and the piece that goes behind I did in the starry sky cardstock so it really makes it stand out and then as well as that you've got some little flowers and there's a bow and a stem and some stars and some huts so it's a really cute little set really useful I bought it because I thought that it was good for scrapbooking too um I like words I love having big words on my scrapbook pages so there's these actually work for that. So the word happy I quite often use on a scrapbook page um, and a lot of my customers do. And if it's, you know, if I've got a party or something like that that I'm, uh, that I'm scrapbooking, then the word celebrate goes really well. But it, they look great on cards too. And I think it works really nicely. But I do feel that it needs some bling now. So what was the... Let's have a little look. Oh! What happened to you? Why? 
So you've been looking at the side of my head as I do this the whole time. How long has that been like that for? I don't know why my camera does this sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just go back there for a second. Back to me and then back to the desk. How about that? All right. I don't know. What happened? That's weird. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like them. So did that answer the question, Kay? The, the dies are called wanted to say. Okay, they are really nice. Oh, wink is a good idea. Would I, where would I wink? I think I'd wink on the word. That would be the place to wink if I was going to do that. Let me see. Let me see. Let's do, let's wink over the white. I think that'll be the go. And just going to pop that here. I'm just going to go right along the whole thing and I'm making it sparkly because, you know, sparkles are always good. I'm feeling sparkly tonight. How about you? So who is going to join me tomorrow for Craft Along? Anyone here planning on watching at 2 o'clock tomorrow? Because I hope you can because it's going to be a lot of fun. And I love, I love doing um, this kind of thing in, in the format, the craft along format, because it's at a better time for a lot of people around the world. You like the die set? Yes, I should have used the adhesive sheet on this in a word. It would work best, better for me if I did that too, Lynn. <laughs> oh, yay. So we're going to have some people here tomorrow. Yay, that's good news. Good news. I love to hear that. All right, let me grab my um, little box of embellishments and I'm thinking I will pull in my rhinestones because I think those might be the go I think another option would be the sparkly ones that I told you these aren't going to go but we have the all oh, the green might go and we've also got blue but maybe those those um even though they're granny apple green they kind of would match with the parakeet what do we think do we want those or do we want the rhinestones what do you guys think? You can't watch tomorrow, but that's okay. Oh, Mahjong is so much fun. Totally understand. We'll see you on the replay. Completely understand that. Oh, that's okay, Joanne. That's completely fine. You think the green, Katrina? Okay, green and green, says Leslie. Green it is. Let's do that. All right, let's add a few of them. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool because that's the easiest way. And I'm going to... oh got a bonus cat hair how about that wonder where that could come from hmm, it's orange how did that happen and then um, I'm thinking from here and maybe another little one further up hmm. there we go so it's different. It's not kind. Of, it's not my normal style of card at all, <laughs> but it does work. And it was kind of something I just had in my head for a little bit of fun. Something you could do different with this stamp set than what you might be thinking. So not just for Christmas, right? This is not a Christmas card. <laughs> and then I also have this one that we made tonight as well. This is my favorite of the two we made. This one is not my thing as much. It, it turned out, but it's not my not my favorite. But this I really like. I think that's really pretty. So there you go. All righty. Well, I think um, tomorrow will be a lot of fun. I really hope to see um, as many of you as I can. Um, I'm going to be doing um, the one card. I'm going to do a couple of different styles of the one card in the 2 o'clock session. And um, for those of you that have the supplies, have them ready to go if you wanted to craft along. If you're planning to just watch and have your um, minting fingers ready, that's fine as well. Okay, so there we go. Have a great night, guys. Uh, lovely to spend some time with you. Hang on while I just switch back to me again. There we go. Here I am. <laughs> all right. So good night to all of you, and I hope that um, you have good sleeps, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>